Ooh, kind of a weird hit there. Well, that line is not good. Welcome back to JR Pro Shop Vids. Today we got the hype solid from Storm and Jungo is back. My cousin Jungo is back from the Pan Am Games qualifier in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. And if you want to hear how him and Francois Lavoie did, check up here. Now let's focus on the review today. We have the hype solid which features the hyped core and the VTC solid cover stock. Now this ball should be one step higher in performance than your tropical storms from Storm. <laughs> it's a lower end type ball, which should be lower than the mid-performance bowling balls. Higher than the tropicals, lower than the IQs, and when we're talking performance, we're basically saying the more you pay for the ball, the more hook you're gonna get. Now to put that to the test, we're gonna see if this lower mid ball can stack up against the famous benchmark phase two. The phase two is Jungo's benchmark, it's my benchmark, it's a lot of people's benchmark bowling ball, and we wanna know if this hype solid is as good as the phase two, but at a lower price. We have two patterns for our Team Canada member today. First up, it's carbon, our house shot. Should be no problem for Jungo. And on the other lane, we have 36 foot Pegasus. Shorter pattern, and it's gonna be very interesting to see how the hype solid reacts on the two of them. Big news, Jera Pro Shop is now on TikTok. So make sure to follow us. Link will be down below. Lots of funny clips, behind the scenes, and bloopers. You're gonna to wanna to see it. Shout out to all of our members. Thank you so much for becoming part of our community. If you want early access to videos, some coaching, and some free merch, click the join button below. Enough talk, let's see Jung Bowl. What's up everybody, Jungle is back. Today we got the Hyped Solid. A uh, little bit different layouts here on these balls. You got the pin right in the ring, right in between pin up and pin down, pin in the ring. So we're gonna see how these balls roll and we're gonna compare it against the trusty old phase two. Most people's benchmark ball, so why not throw it against the best? We'll see how it compares, if we can get the same amount of hook for a little bit less money. All right, starting off on the house shot here. Carbon, 42 feet, so pretty easy. So we'll just start with the uh, phase two, just left of the third arrow. Yeah, trust the old phase two. Pretty long and pretty snappy on the fresh, right? But the uh, ball thing of phase two is gonna really control that. Lots of dry boards on the outside and the back end right now. So you really do need a ball that digs in early, smooths that out. So phase two, first ball out of the bag for most people. I bring mine everywhere, pin in the ring. Just seems to be like the perfect benchmark ball right in the middle of the arsenal. Got a few balls to hook less, a few balls to hook more. So it's a good read on the lanes, right? That's what you want out of benchmark. Yeah, that wasn't bad, just got a little bit right at the break point. Came in a little behind the head pin. Got the little Swisher 7. As you can see, the house shot missed a little bit, still hit the pocket. That's what you want to see, so. Let's throw the hype solid on that same line. I'm thinking I'm going to miss the head pin to the right. We got some hook there with that hype solid. That surprised me, I thought it wasn't going to hook that much. A little bit rounder shape I see. Phase two definitely has like a more defined hook shape in the back end, like a little bit stronger overall. Phase two, got a little bit right at the previous shot, hooked back with the Swisher 7. Threw the hype solid on the same line as the very first shot with the phase two and it struck as well. Just a little bit light, so let's throw that same shot again. We'll just slow it down and uh, see if we can get hit at flush like the phase two. This ball definitely has a little bit less hook potential. Seems close on the house shot here. Okay, that was really good off the hand, left a little wrap 10. Phase two definitely went through the pins a little bit better from that angle. Just a stronger bowling ball overall, so. We got a little step down here, sim solid. Phase two also a sim solid. We just got a, a little tiny step down here. 
with the same layout, same box finish. So that's pretty good. That's what you're looking for, right? Okay, so I think the best way to get the ball through the pins the right way is uh, just keep everything the same, but we're gonna move two boards to the right with our eyes and our feet. Just feed it to that dry a little bit sooner, have it face up and go through the pins the proper way. Okay, that was better. Threw the pins around really well. Kind of a weird hit there. Swisher four pin, that carried. So, so far I'm liking what I see out of this ball. The problem sometimes I have with the lower end balls are unpredictable. Sometimes they hook a lot in the back end off the dry. Sometimes they go dead straight. Not sure exactly what it's gonna do. So I usually don't carry that many low end balls around at all. But uh, this one seems pretty consistent. Hooks pretty early and smooth. Might have something a little different here. Okay, same shot, just gonna slow it down a little bit more. Another good shot, wrap 10 again. It's really close, wrap 10s are okay. Just doesn't have that entry angle like the phase two does from that line. So I think we bump a couple more to the right. So that's the problem with house patterns, right? Most balls are gonna hit the pocket just because there's lots of room for error, but it's getting the ball through the pins the right way. The phase two was a little bit better than the hype solid here. Just playing like that slightly inside third arrow line. So with a weaker ball, I think we gotta move a little bit further to the right. So now we are four boards right of the phase two. Okay, that was much better. See how it like picked up a little earlier, drove through the pins a little bit harder, finished down by the eight pin. So that's kind of what you want to see more than if you're leaving like a weak 10, flat 10, wrap 10. Get that ball driving through the pins a little bit harder, move slightly to the right, hit the friction a little bit sooner. So even though house shots allow you to hit the pocket all day, it still can be a little bit tricky getting the ball through the pins right away. So we've all had those days when we're just nine spare all day long, hit the pocket all day. So guess what? You probably got the wrong ball in your hand. So let's go two more to the right and uh, see how it looks. We are now six boards right of where we were at the phase two. Ooh, all right. I like that a little bit better. I leaked it a little right at the break point. Wrap 10 again. So a little iffy on this house pattern right now. Like I feel like I should be able to carry all 10 with that. All right, that was a pretty good shot. Left the four pin, so I think I'm a little bit too far to the right now after moving two boards, because when I missed to the right, it would hit the pocket nice and flush. I think there's just a little bit too much volume on this house pattern for the lower end hype solid here. As you can see, it just doesn't pick up soon enough in order to go through the pins properly. I really have to adjust my speed and my roll. So I think I would just rather change balls at this point. So let's throw a couple more at the phase two and then we'll move over to a different pattern and see how it does. All right, so two boards right of where I was originally with this phase two. I need a strike with this so I can show the people. All right, see how that just picks up a little bit sooner in the mid lane, has more continuation down lane. So I'm able to go through the pins really nice with the phase two, where I think there's just slightly too much oil on this house condition for the hype solid, just goes a little bit too long. All right, one more with the phase two here. We'll move over to the short pattern and see how the hype solid does over there. Ah, uh, phase two is just so dirty. All right, about halfway through the vid here with Jungo. Throwing the phase two and the hype solid side by side. Phase two is like my benchmark ball, comes with me everywhere. Hype solid is like a step down from that. If I were bowling in the center with less oil, a little bit more friction, hype solid would probably be one of my go-to balls. So my question to you, how many alleys do you bowl in? How many different centers do you bowl in regularly? Let me know down in the comments. All right. We're on the next lane over, short pattern, 36 feet, Pegasus. I'm thinking the hype solid's gonna work a little bit better here on the short pattern. We got a little bit more dry boards to work with. Just a little bit too much oil, and I think a little bit too long over there on the house pattern, 42 feet. We're gonna get lined up with the phase two again, and then we're gonna throw the hype solid on the same line. So we wanna play a little bit further right here, 36 feet, so break point around five or six. All right, that was a pretty good shot. Just a lot of dry boards down lane, right? Almost half the lane is dry, so that phase two just hooks like crazy, right? I'm gonna try and move a little bit left, open the angle a little, but this is really not really ideal for a short pattern on the fresh, swinging the whole lane, so. Phase two benchmark, yes, on short pattern, probably not. Okay, we struck, we hit it pretty flush. Well, that line is not good. A little bit too far right, I think I throw it in the gutter. And if I miss a little bit left from there, I think I go through the face. So we got lucky, threw a good shot, caught all 10. Pretty violent reaction off the back end. Don't like that on the short pattern. So you can really see the differences these patterns make. Okay, hype solid. 
This should look much better on this pattern. Same line as the first shot with the face two that went high. Okay, that went high also. The reaction wasn't so violent off the back end, right? A little bit tamer core, not as much cover stock. It's not gonna hook as hard, it just can't. All right, keep in mind this short pattern is really fresh. If I were to bowl for score, I'd probably use my pitch black. So let's just bump a couple to the left here, see if we can get it to roll pretty smooth off the buck end. All right, not bad. Missed a little bit to the left, as you can see. Just a little left, goes through the face on a short pattern, right? So something like this, you definitely want to play further right with like a, re a urethane ball. Okay, we'll stay in that same spot. We'll just soften up the hand a little bit. It's definitely tamer than the phase two. That phase two was crazy off the back end. And I'm a couple boards right of the phase two when it struck. We got definitely got to step down here on all patterns. The house shot, right, brings them closer together. Another good thing about using urethane on like shorter patterns to start is that it carries the oil down a little bit and lengthens the pattern out. So it makes it a little bit easier for you. Later on when you do, you have to use reactive. So I'm using reactive on the fresh right now. And it's pretty tough, not gonna lie, it's pretty tough. Okay, I'm just gonna inch a little bit further left with the hype solid here. Yeah, really good shot. Just covering too many boards there. Wrap the 10. Definitely got to step down here from the phase two. I think this ball will be really good on the short after a couple games of urethane when the oils carry down a little bit. Back end's a little bit tamer, but you don't have to be so far left, right? You can just go from like a pitch black to the hype solid on a shorter pattern and stay a little bit further right. I think that'll be money. Okay, let's go back to where I struck from. Yeah, that looks good. I know it's a, like a week seven, but I like that shape. It's a very controllable shape, especially on back end that's really clean. So really like what I'm seeing out of the lower end balls here. This is like one step above the tropical line. Usually those kind of balls are like really sharp and they come shiny. We're starting to see a few balls a little bit more dull, a little bit more controllable, like the Rawhammer Black. That's like a lower end sim solid that's pretty controllable. So hype solid's another one. So just because we're throwing a lower end ball doesn't mean we can't get a little bit of control out of it. Nice smooth early rolling balls that are that don't hook much. I'm liking it. Another good shot. It's hard to kick those corners out playing that angle. I think you guys heard me talk enough. Let's throw one strike here and we'll go talk some more in the shop actually. Ooh, that was sweet. Let's go home. All right, Jungle's back from the lanes. Got done throwing the famous phase two against a brand new hyped solid. Both got the same layout, pin in the ring. So something a little bit different down in the lanes. For me, pin in the ring is just a little bit longer down lane, a little bit more continuous than a pin up and a little bit more pop down lane than a pin down ball. So I really like that layout. I've been using it for a while for my tournament balls. So I figured I'd put it in a video and see how it did. On the house pattern, started with the phase two, just a really aggressive cover stock on the phase two. So it's able to round that corner and continue through the pins at a pretty steep angle. I was slightly left of third arrow there and the ball was able to continue through the pin deck really nice and carry all 10 most of the time. Where on the same line, the hype solid was just a little bit weaker down lane, left a couple 10 pins, couple wrap 10s, and just wasn't able to turn the corner as hard and go through the pins as well as the phase two from that angle. So deep inside angles, third, fourth arrow, phase two definitely hooks a little bit more, definitely continues more. So then I moved a couple boards to the right with the hype solid. It looked much better, was able to pick up a little bit earlier in the dry, go through the pins a little bit better. But overall, I think the house shot here just has a little bit too much oil. The oil is also a little bit too long for the hype solid, just couldn't get the ball going through the pin deck the right way on the house powder. The house powder here definitely needs higher performance bowling balls, stronger layouts. And you can see really see that with the phase two. So if I were to bowl for score, I would probably even use something a little bit stronger than the phase two, like my infinite physics or something along those lines. We then moved over to the short pattern and I thought the hype solid would look really good on the short just because it was a little bit lazier down lane in the phase two so I would be able to control the back ends a little bit better just because there is a lot of dry boards down lane. It did. Phase two was crazy off the back end. I really had to play a steep angle through the front in order to keep that ball into the pocket and that's just not ideal on a fresh short pattern, right? You want to control those angles 
and that's why urethane is used most of the time. We did throw the hype solid though, much better than the phase two on the short pattern, much less violent off the back end, was able to control it a little bit more, but still not ideal for that condition at that point in time. So I think I would start with the pitch black there if I was bowling for score, and then go into the hype solid after a couple games of carry down, and when the back end's a little bit more tame, it calls for a reactive ball that doesn't go crazy. Three to six boards less hook than the phase two overall, but much less dynamic down lane, just doesn't have that continuation like the phase two does. And I think that's why this ball is really popular. So if you're bowling in a house that's a little bit drier, let's say your phase two is just hooking a little bit too much, you need a lower ranking benchmark ball that you can use to kind of figure the lanes out. Hype solid. You know, this ball is gonna be really good for that. Just here where I bowl, the tournaments I bowl, I think there's just gonna be a little bit too much oil for it. But if you're bowling in a center that doesn't use that much volume for their oil patterns, the lanes hook a lot. If your phase two is just hooking a little bit too much, this is one of your bigger hooking balls in your bag. You need something just to step down. This would be a great compliment. Put the same layout on it. You probably got three to six boards, a little bit less hook down lane. So I know some people around here need that. Some people all over is gonna need that. So I think this ball is gonna be really popular for that. And it's got a good price, right? It's a little bit cheaper than the phase two. So I think this ball is gonna be really good, really popular for a lot of people. Just a little build off my question and halfway through the video, make sure you answer that down in the comments. How many alleys do you bowl at regularly? You have to make sure you have a wide variety of balls if you're bowling in two, three centers usually. And they're not all gonna play the same. You're not gonna use those same balls in all the centers. So this is a good ball to keep in mind if you need something a little bit lower end that's still controllable, still rolls pretty early and smooth. And that just doesn't have as much teeth as something like a phase two or something like that. I think this ball would be really good for those kind of conditions. Thanks for watching everyone. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video, comment down below, answer the question or any other question that you have. Thanks to all the members who've joined so far, learning lots, we have fun communicating back and forth. So if you'd like to become a member, hit that join button below as well. See you in the next video.